The largest operating steam locomotive in the world is the Union Pacific's number 3985. Remember, the key word is operating. The Union Pacific's big boys with their 4884 wheel arrangement were over 135 feet long and weighed in at over 1,200,000 pounds. They were the largest steam locomotives ever built. One should not conclude, however, that the 3985 is small by any means. It weighs approximately 1,070,000 pounds, is almost 122 feet long, and stands just under 17 feet high. Its 69 inch drivers and 280 pounds per square inch boiler pressure are capable of developing almost 100,000 pounds of tractive effort at the rail. In its early service years, it attained speeds approaching 70 miles per hour. The 3985 is one of 105 locomotives with the 4664 wheel arrangement purchased by the Union Pacific Railroad. They became officially known as the Challenger class. The original 40 Challengers were delivered in 1936 and 1937. They differed in appearance and design from the later series which the 3985 belonged to. All 105 of the Challengers were built by the American Locomotive Company in Schenectady, New York. The 3985 itself was delivered to the Union Pacific in July of 1943 and is representative of the heavier series of 4664s. The 3985 is an articulated locomotive, meaning that the front engine and pilot are connected with pivoting joints, which allow everything below the boiler and in front of the second cylinder to operate freely and thus allow the engine to negotiate tighter curves. The 3985 operated its final miles of revenue service in the late 1950s and was officially retired in 1962. It was then stored in the Cheyenne Roundhouse along with the big boy number 4023. In later years both locomotives were moved out of the roundhouse and found themselves being shuffled around the Cheyenne yards. Then, in the mid-1970s, the 4023 found its way to Omaha, Nebraska, where after being displayed outside the Omaha shops, it was placed on permanent display in Kennefick Park. While the 4023 was being introduced to Omaha, the 3985 was placed on display in the employee's parking lot adjacent to the Cheyenne Depot. This move ultimately led to the return to operation of one of the Union Pacific's finest examples of steam power. In 1979, a group of Union Pacific employees volunteered their off-duty time to bring the 3985 back to life. During the next two years, over 8,000 man-hours were applied to the 3985 project by the volunteers. This was completed in April of 1981, and in May of that same year, the 3985 was double-headed with Union Pacific's venerable 484, number 8440. Together, they journeyed to the opening ceremonies of rail fare in Sacramento, California. Over the next several years, the coal-burning Challenger operated numerous excursions and other assignments. However, because of its propensity to shower the countryside with hot cinders, and thus ignite numerous grass fires, the 3985 was limited to the Sherman Hill area between Cheyenne and Laramie, Wyoming. In 1990, the 3985 was converted to an oil burner, so it could be utilized throughout the system. On July 24th, it pulled a light train to LaSalle, Colorado to test its oil firing capabilities. The trip to LaSalle was completed without incident. On the return trip to Cheyenne, any questions pertaining to the success of the conversion were answered, 
when the 3985 charged up the 1% grade north of Greeley, Colorado with well over 5,000 tons tied to its drawbar. The oil conversion was an outstanding success and the 3985 was now ready to fulfill a variety of assignments throughout the Union Pacific system. The first assignment came one week later when the Big Challenger was assigned the task of pulling a complete 140 car, 7,600 ton double stack train for the American President's Line. History was made on that August 1st morning when over 8,000 feet of modern contemporary equipment was pulled unassisted by the 3985 from Cheyenne to North Platte, Nebraska. Big Alco product crested the summit of Archer Hill east of Cheyenne at 35 miles per hour and then raced across the expanses of western Nebraska at speeds approaching 70 miles per hour. In September of 1990, the 3985 was again called to duty. It was to pull a special from North Platte to Omaha, Nebraska, in conjunction with the annual River City Roundup celebration. Whenever possible, the steam locomotives of the Union Pacific are assigned a regular freight manifest to either catch up to the passenger equipment or reach our assignment. Such is the case here as we see the hard-charging Challenger departing Cheyenne bound for North Platte and its date with the River City Roundup Special. You might also note the 460 locomotive number 1243 following along on the special flat car. Built in 1890, it traveled with the 8444 during the 1990 season to celebrate both its centennial and those of Idaho and Wyoming. The next morning, the 3985 stormed out of North Platte and the 1990 edition of the River City Roundup Special was underway. One of the highlights of this special was providing the Operation Lifesaver program an opportunity to allow busloads of school children to ride between stops and witness a real live operating steam locomotive. This made the special a favorite with the native public.
Union Pacific Railroad realized early on that steam locomotives could be a positive public relations tool. One only has to witness this massive giant in action to understand its ability to impress onlookers. The 3985 can develop between 5 and 6,000 horsepower. Under full throttle, it consumes up to 200 gallons of water per mile. In that same mile, the 15 and a half foot by 9 foot firebox can burn over 20 gallons of number 5 fuel oil. Its huge tender holds 25,000 gallons of water and 5,900 gallons of fuel oil when full. Union Pacific has found a variety of ways to utilize the steam program, and often excursions are arranged for local groups when the locomotives are in their area on other business. Such was the case with this evening round trip excursion from Omaha to Columbus, Nebraska, sponsored by the Camrail Club, and operated while the 3985 was in town for the River City festivities. also utilizes the STEAM program to promote employee functions whenever possible. The Employees Club Special is a train operated annually for employees and retirees of the Union Pacific Railroad. The 1990 edition of this special got an extra bonus when the 3985 was coupled to the front end for the North Platte to Cheyenne portion of its journey. In May of 1991, the 3985 was again teamed up with the 844. Together, they again made the round trip journey to Sacramento to help celebrate Railfair's 10th anniversary.
Rail fan organizations have always been drawn to the STEAM program and in turn have sponsored numerous excursions. In June of 1992, the Union Pacific Historical Society held its annual convention in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and it was only fitting that a trip over Sherman Hill be a part of the convention festivities. At the close of the 1991 season, the complete overhaul of locomotive number 844 was begun, leaving the 3985 to shoulder all steam operations. The convention participants were far from disappointed as it was only fitting that one of the most fabled mountain divisions in the world be tackled by the largest operating steam locomotive in the world. Rail fan groups have also been instrumental in sponsoring excursions while en route to and from scheduled activities. This was showcased in July of 1992 when the 3985 participated in the National Railway Historical Society's annual convention in San Jose, California. Through the efforts of the Pacific Limited Group, seating was made available on the round trip from Cheyenne to San Jose and return. Not all segments of the STEAM program's assignments includes excursions. In this August segment of 1992, the 3985 pulled freight to Kansas City to meet the passenger equipment and continued on to participate in the Republican National Convention held in Houston, Texas. Winter operations of steam locomotives in the 1990s are generally pretty rare. Late in 1992, the 3985 operated a Santa Claus special for CSX Railroad. Departing St. Louis on its return trip, 3985 demonstrates how impressive steam can be when the temperatures aren't. Corporate and business groups have also sponsored events. In December of 1992, the Sutherland Lumber Company chartered a special train north out of Kansas City. Designated the Sutherland Santa Claus Special, the train offered dozens of school children the opportunity not only to see, but also ride behind their first steam locomotive. On May 17, 1953, the Rocky Mountain Railroad Club sponsored the first steam excursion operated by the Union Pacific Railroad. It was pulled by the smoke wing equipped Challenger number 3967. 
In May of 1993, the steam crew applied smoke wings to the 3985 at the Cheyenne shops. A special excursion had been planned for May 15th to celebrate the 40th anniversary of that very first trip. Before the special's departure from Denver's Union Station, the 3985 was renumbered to 3967. The cosmetic restoration was now complete. As with all Union Pacific steam specials, the Rocky Mountain Club's 40th anniversary excursion consist was made up from some of the railroad's collection of first-class equipment. The entire passenger car fleet has been completely refurbished and no other railroad can compare with its quality or size. A recent addition to the passenger car fleet is the steam program's own commissary car, the Sherman Hill. Converted from a former railway post office car, the Sherman Hill was basically designed by and built to steam crew specifications. Memorabilia and other souvenir items, including videotapes, such as this program, may be purchased in the Sherman Hill and the proceeds help to offset the operational cost of the steam program. Over the years, the Union Pacific has gained a reputation for both the quality and quantity of photo runbys which are performed during their excursions. Let's take this opportunity to observe a photo run by Union Pacific style. After the passengers have formed their photo lines, the throttle is eased out and the show begins. While the passengers are reboarding, join me in the cab of the 3985 as I describe its controls. We're in the cab of the 3985 Challenger locomotive at Perkins, Wyoming on the uh, 40th anniversary of the first official public excursion on the Union Pacific. We're on the fireman's side of the locomotive right now, and I thought I'd give you a rundown as to what, we're, uh, what we have on here. The red handle up here is the uh, warm water injector like this, what we do is we're injecting water into the boiler to keep our levels up so we make more steam. Down below here we have the, the brass handle is our uh, oil valve. This is the oil firing valve that controls the amount of oil going into the firebox. The red handle 
valve on top, and over here is the lower valve. Used to uh, create the artificial draft when we're sitting still. When we're moving, the exhaust off the locomotive creates the draft more. It sets the blower off. We work down this way. We have a series of tank heaters and stuff to heat the oil and an atomizer valve to atomize the oil as it goes into the firebox. We got pressure gauges, water gauges. Move over to the middle here. We'll show you the firebox. On the other side, you've got the throttle, the double trigger handle on the product on the ceiling here. Squeeze it, pull it back, let the steam into the cylinder to make the pistons for that off, drive the driver. This is the reverse gear for forward and reverse. As you're going along, you always start out, you're down from all pulling forward. As you get going faster and faster, you work your way up towards about 33% cutoff, so if you're starting up the momentum, the engine through some of the work, save on fuel and water. The truck the first slurps the valves inside there and let the steam in. We've got the independent brake for the engine, the automatic brake for the train brake, the bell, the standard. The engineer's right, we've got a cold water injector on the floor. We use this one when the uh, warm water injector doesn't work. It takes your seat away. The engineer too has a boiler gate that shows the boiler tractor. He has a head end device now which is replaced the cabooses. And he's got a water gate just the same. And he's got the whip lock inside. The 3985 will continue to shoulder the Union Pacific Steam program until the completion of the 844's overhaul. With yet another full schedule slated for the upcoming season, there should be plenty of opportunities to witness this impressive machine in action.